Boston at the UMass Boston soccer field for first round action of Little East Conference play at the, tur the tournament. The UMass Boston Beacons play host as the three seed to the six seed, the Keene State Owls. Good afternoon, everybody. Andrew Bluestein here with you, which promises to be a good matchup. Conference play starting here this afternoon. Beacons coming in, as I mentioned, as the three seed. As we look at some season statistics for these two teams coming in, as you can see here, goals per game, UMass Boston not favored in that category. The Keene State Owls have the advantage at 1.55. Goals against, though, however, UMass Boston has been sound defensively this year at 1.17. Shots on goal per game, Keene State has the big advantage there, 14.5 shots per game. So the UMass Boston defense is going to have to be ready for that today and saves just about around the same slight advantage to UMass Boston. Spilios has been spectacular this year for the Beacons and corners 3.72 to the four for the Owls and seven shutouts to the, the uh, Owls eight. So one more for the Owls. So it should be a pretty solid matchup here today. These two teams played earlier this season on October 5th, it was the Beacons who took the 2-1 victory. Danny Anderson scoring both goals in that game. As now we look into players to watch for today's game. Uh, Kaylee Haynes for UMass Boston. Five goals, three assists on the season, 13 points. Uh, she has been rather stellar for the Beacons this season, creating a lot of offense. And as we look for uh, to the Owls, it's Elizabeth Kopiko. Keep your eye on her as she comes in with nine goals on the season. So she's the player that the UMass Boston defense has to be ready for here today. And we're going to step aside for a quick break, and we'll be right back here on the Beacons Broadcast Network. Boston Beacons playoff primer for all your fall sports recapping the ones that have already played in their LEC tournaments and getting ready for the ones participating this week women's tennis your first one up a 9-1 regular season 8-0 in the Little East Conference they won their first ever Little East Conference title in program history the other week against Rhode Island College they await the NCAA tournament in May and then Little East Conference cross-country championships this past Saturday hosted by UMB at Franklin Park the women Finished seventh out of the seven teams that placed. Jacqueline Erner first for the Beacons. Jimmy Cannon, all LEC first team as the Beacon men finished sixth out of eight. They go to regionals in a couple of weeks. And now this week we get you ready for men's soccer, women's soccer, and women's volleyball. Men's soccer having an impressive year. A 9-5-3 regular season, 6-2 and two in Little East Conference play, earning the second seed in the tournament. They get a first round bye, so they will play on Thursday afternoon against either Eastern Connecticut State University or Keene State College. The winner of that one will be decided on Tuesday afternoon. The Beacons have looked good as of late, slipped in their final game of the regular season against Castleton. We'll see what they can bring to the table on Thursday at home. Kasim L. Ashkar has been pretty steady in goal, making some great saves all year to keep the Beacons alive in some close matches. Women's soccer having a rough start to their season, but they have really turned it on in the past month. The Beacons, an 8-8-2 eight, eight and two record in the regular season, 5-3 and three in the Little East Conference. They end up clinching the third seed. Now, at the start of the year, they were struggling mightily, and they actually started the year one seven and two. The Beacons a seven in one October to get themselves up to that three seed. A very impressive turnaround. Their one loss this year in October coming against Tufts University, a very tough NESCAC team. So nothing to hang their heads about. The Beacons are rolling into this tournament hot. A team to watch as they will take on Keene State College at home, the six seed. Tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m., the Beacons looking to get to the semifinals and face off against WestCon, possibly, this upcoming Thursday. Maria Spilios has been great in net for the Beacons, and the defense has really come alive in the last eight games. Women's volleyball sneaking in as the sixth seed, the defending champions, getting in after winning their final two Little East Conference games, a 7-17 regular season, 3-5 in the LEC 
Their playoff hopes were hanging by a thread, but they defeated Westcon at home and then defeated Castleton on the road, mixed with two Southern Maine losses. The Beacons are in the tournament as the sixth seed. They take on number three UMass Dartmouth on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. The Beacons looking to try and get back to the championship game and win yet another conference title. And we're back here on the Beacons Broadcast Network as we look quickly here before the National Anthem, the scenario for the Little, Easter, the Little East Conference play. So the winner of this game will move on to play Western Connecticut. It will be determined at a later time. Western Connecticut, the two seed, that winner of this team, this game rather, excuse me, will go be going on the road. And so we'll keep our eye on that. And we also have women's volleyball, number three at UMass Dartmouth. It's at 7 p.m. And men's soccer, it will be playing the number three seed, Eastern Connecticut State. Uh, or they will play the winner of Eastern Connecticut State, Keene State, as we step aside for the national anthem. And we're back here on the Beacons Broadcast Network. As we look at today's starting lineups for both teams, first for the visiting Keene State Owls, in net will be Sonia Moritz, the goalkeeper, midfielder, Amanda Marshall, uh, forward jo uh, Jocelyn Tyler, midfielder Kaylee Marshall, defender Alex Alexa Skinner, defender Rachel Souza, defender Juliana Stolfi, Defender Kathleen Mullen and forward, or excuse me, midfielder Elizabeth Kopiko, midfielder Aleska Jansky, and midfielder Kendall Healy. And for you, your UMass Boston Beacons in goal will be Maria Spilios, uh, midfielder Kayla Eat, Kalia Eaton, uh, McKenna Hallinan at midfielder, backer will be Sarah Gavin, midfielder Andrea Rivera. Midfielder, Aaliyah Velez. Backer, Kelly McNeil. Backer, Sarah Kelly. Midfielder, Caroline Golt. Midfielder, Kaylee Haynes. Or, excuse me, forward, Kaylee Haynes. And forward, or backer, Danny Anderson. So, that's your lineup for the Beacons as we're just about to get set here for first round action. Little East Conference Tournament. These Beacons... Not the start they wanted at the beginning, but they turned it on the second half of the year as they finished five and three in conference play. The Owls three and five. The Owls actually have the better record overall at 10, eight and two. Beacons finished at eight, eight and two, but as we mentioned, the conference play with the better record, which is why they are the higher seed here today. As we mentioned, the winner of this game will go on to play the number two seed, Western Connecticut. And they will be the road team in that, being the winner of this game here this afternoon. As the Beacons break their huddle and line up in formation. Beacons in the white, going from right to left across your screen. Owls in the red. As we wait for them to break their huddle, and there they do. 
as they get in formation. And we have some playoff soccer here, folks, on this Tuesday afternoon. Overcast, not expecting rain, but hopefully I don't put the kibosh on that. As we're underway here from UMass Boston, as the Owls will send things away. Played down by McNeil. She sends it over to the near side. Golt now plays it up. Eakins look to move it ahead as getting tripped up there was Eaton on the far side. So a quick foul taken by the Owls and a free kick here for the Beacons. McNeil will take it. She boots it ahead. Nice kick there. It's headed back the other way, but the Beacons play it back ahead. That one kicked high in the air back the other way. Foot race for it. Gavin will play it back to Anderson. Anderson uses her keeper, Spilios, plays it back to Anderson. Anderson moves it ahead to Gavin, but they're going to say it was out of bounds, and it'll be a throw in for the Owls. So Keene State now with the ball on the offensive side of the field as they look to move ahead. Throw in there by Stolfi. But back the other way, the Beacons possess it, but Allenen couldn't handle the pass as the Owls get it right back. Marshall plays it ahead. But nice job there defensively by Anderson, who has been very positionally sound all season. Now back to Spilios. Smart play there by Velez using her keeper as now the Beacons try to move it past midfield. They get stonewalled there, but are able to regain possession. Anderson with it, looking for options, decides to boot it ahead. That one's headed down by Haynes, but back the other way come the Owls. That one's booted ahead. Tyler couldn't handle the pass, and now McNeil with it, has space. Boots it ahead to Haynes. Haynes now looking to press the attack. And a good job on defense getting back by Stolfi as she closes in. But Haynes quickly moves it in on the throw. And that one goes towards the box. Fighting for it there in front as that shot goes wide by McKenna Hallinan. As the freshman had a good opportunity there. Just didn't really quite have the angle. And it's going to be a goal kick here for the Owls. So Sonia Moritz, the freshman goalkeeper from Silver Springs, Maryland, will boot it ahead, but goes right back the other way. Beacons try to get it towards the box. Haynes with it. Haynes working on the defender, puts it towards the goal, and a nice save there by Moritz. So... Beacons with a couple of good opportunities here early on in this first half as Moritz decides to slow things down and she boots it high in the air past the center line and it goes all the way back to Anderson and she gives it to Spilios. The keeper plays it on the far side to McNeil. McNeil boots it to the far side to Kelly. Kelly back to McNeil. McNeil calling signals, now boots it ahead. That goes off of Rivera and out of bounds. So throw in here for Keene State. Skinner with the throw in, but McNeil is able to collect it, get it back to Anderson. Anderson with a little bit of time here. Now kicks it onto the near side to Gavin. Gavin avoids the pressure there, moving it up as we have a player down on the turf for the Owls, trying to see who it is. I believe it's number six, Kaylee Marshall, the senior. A little slow to get up. And you hope it's not her right knee. She's already wearing what appears to be a knee brace there. And they're calling for the trainers. So we're going to take a quick break here and step aside on the Beacons Broadcast Network, brought to you by LittleEast.tv.
And we're back here on the Beacons Broadcast Network, brought to you by Little East TV. Andrew Bluestein here with you on this Tuesday afternoon. First round of Little East Conference play. As Kaylee Marshall able to walk off the field under her own power. Good to see there. I hope she's all right and can return to this game. As that one's booted ahead by Stolfi. And a hard collision there. And I believe they're going to call that a foul indeed. Didn't see who was on, but it was Copico that went hard to the turf for the Owls. She was quick to get up and appears to be all right. So free kick here. That'll be taken by Alexis Skinner. She boots it away towards the box. Knocked down. Owls able to get it. Still loose there, but Spilios in good position. Fishes it out. And she hurls it ahead. Nice play by Spilios. Gets it to Haynes. Haynes leaves it back off for Gavin. Now Velez goes across to McNeil. I Baker closing in on her. That one's kicked to the far side out of bounds by Souza. So throw in here for the Beacons. And it'll be Sarah Kelly, the junior out of Marshfield, Mass, who throws it in, or who will throw it in. Now she does. Velez with it, plays it towards the middle to Gavin. Gavin a little hesitant there first, but she's able to get to the ball. Now Velez gets in front of it with her body. Moving it ahead is Rivera. Now Haynes on the near side. Working on Stolfi. Haynes, a nice move, trying to stay with it. Gets it to Velez. Velez tracks down the ball, kicks it to the far side. Looking for Eaton. Eaton stays with it, gets her body in front of the clearing attempt, but the Owl's able to get rid of it upfield, and it'll go out of bounds for another Beacons throw in. Kelly once again to do the honors. Kelly looking for options. Now sees what she likes, and that one's headed back the other way by Skinner, and once again, out of bounds. So Kelly does it, or will do it again here, as plays it to Golt, the easy option in front of her. Knocked down by Souza, but the Beacons take control. Played ahead. Oh. Allen and was looking for Haynes, who might have been in alone if they had connected. But the pass was disrupted. Now a stalemate here at midfield. Allen and able to come out with it, gets it to Haynes. Gavin now, pinching it on the near side. Haynes throws one towards the box, but it's sent away as now the ball finds Gavin, who plays it towards the goal, but nobody home there for the Beacons and Moritz will collect it and slow things down here for the Owls. Moritz punts it high in the air towards midfield. Golt got her foot on that one. Now McNeil plays it ahead for Eaton, who is battling there with Kendall Healy. And once again goes out of bounds. Kelly trying to move things quickly and they're going to whistle down. They're going to say it's Keene State ball as now they move it in quickly, but goes right back out of bounds. So this time Kelly will get the throw in. Tries to get it to Valdez or Velez, and now Eaton battling with it. Scrum over on the far side. Nice play there by McNeil stepping up, but she kicks it out of bounds. And it'll be a throw in for the Owls. Both teams. Trying to get the ball out quickly on these throw-ins. As now a chance the other way. Here comes Marshall. Marshall plays it towards the box. Looking for the pass perhaps. And couldn't thread the needle. And that one goes out for a goal kick. But good idea there by Marshall. Looking for Jocelyn Tyler who was going hard to the net. And I guess it's going to be a corner. So it deflected off of a Beacon player. Keen State corner kick being taken by number nine, Alexa Skinner. So my mistake. 
The Owls will get the first corner of the game. And it'll be Skinner taking it. Skinner boots it towards the box. And a nice play there by Spilios, intercepting it out of midair. And there were bodies there in front. That was perhaps going to go in, if not for the nice read there by Spilios. And she boots it ahead all the way past midfield. Nice job by Spilios, who has been tremendous all season long for these Beacons. And now chance here for Rivera who tried to weave through traffic couldn't get it through and now back the other way looking to move it was Tyler and now it's collected by Gavin and she'll go back to McNeil and try to slow things down here but Baker was closing in on her but the Beacons are able to escape here now towards midfield Gavin plenty of time and space staying with the ball gets it to Haynes on the near side. Haynes tries to get through the goal. Haynes, a great chance, puts it on goal, and she scores! What a goal by Haynes as she goes bar down, and it's 1-0 Beacons here in the first half. We talked about it at the top of the broadcast. Kaylee Haynes, the player to look out for on the Beacon side of things. And she was the leading scorer all season long for the Beacons. And she continues her streak in to conference play. And the senior from Bridgewater, Mass, Oil Cassidy High School with a huge goal for the Beacons here in the first half as they grab the lead. And we have a player slowly get up. I believe that is Golt, or maybe she's just tying her shoe. But much important first goal for the Beacons here in the first half as Something you've done well all season is playing with the lead. So. As we're waiting for Caroline Golt, I believe that is tying her shoe, and it is. As we have a time dispute now as the officials will try to square away this as we're gonna have to put some seconds back on the clock here due to the stoppage from Golt tying her shoe as the Beacons will have the free kick I believe there was a foul called on the play as well So Anderson steps into one, nice kick there. That one's headed by Hallinan, but sent back the other way. McNeil tries to thread the needle to Velez, is able to, Velez gives it back to Anderson. Now near side, Gavin with it, gets it to Haynes. Didn't quite know where she was though on the pitch and it was out of bounds. Haynes the goal scorer and not just the goal we've seen her with a couple of other solid chances here early on in this contest as the Owls will have a throw in Stolfi sends it towards the corner nice play by Velez as she's being hounded there and that will go out for a goal kick and Spilios it's going to be a free kick. And Anderson plays up to Gavin, who goes right back to Anderson. Now Anderson, ooh, a little pass out in front of Spilios, but she was able to handle it. Now McNeil with it with speed down the far side upfield. Boots it ahead. Skinner got her body on it, but 
Beacon stay with it. Hallinan tries to go back to Kelly, but McNeil's there for the Beacons. Now it's played ahead, though. Chance the other way. Baker. And that one goes out of bounds. Off of a Beacon. Quick throw in by the Owls. That one sent towards the middle, but right there is Anderson in perfect position who plays it ahead for Haynes. Haynes with plenty of space. Haynes with speed, taking it towards the box, gives it to Gavin. Gavin plays it towards the middle, looking for Haynes, but sent back up, but Velez right there to collect it. Now booted ahead, Rivera tries to get the ball there, but stonewalled by Jansky. Gavin to Velez, Velez. Now moves it to Rivera. Rivera being closed in on there by Copico and goes back to McNeil who boots it ahead. That one's headed down. Played up towards midfield. Baker, but nice job by Anderson who absolutely boots that one to the far side. Goes out of bounds. Quickly in on the throw in by the Owls, now they send it past midfield. Tyler sends it back. That's booted ahead by Stolfi. Tyler heads it to Gavin, but she couldn't handle it, now gets it back. Now Anderson with it. Anderson looking for options, gives it to Gavin. Gavin tries to move it up, gets stonewalled by Tyler and she tries to play it towards the box and we'll see what the call is here. And it's gonna be a corner, so it must have went off Anderson. There were two players there, you couldn't tell. I might have hit both of them, but they're gonna say Anderson touched it last. So second corner of the afternoon for the Owls and Skinner will try it again. As she's ready. Skinner sends it low towards the box this time. Somebody got a piece of it in front. Ball's still loose and up for grabs, but it's Sanderson who jumps on it and moves it ahead. Hallinan, nice job there, slowing things down, just leaving it for Haynes. Now Haynes leaves it for Anderson. Anderson tries to spring Haynes, but just a bit too far ahead of her. But good idea though there by Anderson as Haynes had speed going up that near side. Now it's played ahead by Stolfi. Anderson steps in front of that. Now McNeil boots it ahead. Golt with it uh, inside the center circle. Now kicks it back for McNeil. McNeil looking for options, decides to boot it far ahead, looking for Hallinan. Now plays it for Eaton. Eaton gets one towards the goal and nice job there by Moritz as Haynes was closing in and Moritz beat her to it and is able to collect it. And she'll slow things down, let her team kind of resettle here. That one's booted towards the middle. Rivera heads it back the other way and then sent back upfield by Stolfi. But Velez now with it. Tries to thread the needle to Kelly, and a nice play there. Good read by Marshall to get in the way of that one. Now Marshall with it. She plays it ahead. Looking for Baker, but McNeil will get there first, and that will go out of bounds and throw in here for the Owls. And we have a substitution here. So Tyler will come off and Christina Sanders, the freshman, will come in for the Owls. Now in the match for the Owls, number 26, Christina Sanders. That one's played towards the goal, but Spilios there to collect it. She rolls it right to Gavin. She goes back to Spilios. 
Valios looking for options. Back to Gavin who chips it up for Haynes. Haynes now goes back, uses the defenseman Anderson who's back there and she goes back to Spilios. And we've seen a lot of this from the Beacons this year, especially when they have the lead is just preserving that time is now they're on the attack as Anderson gets it ahead for Haynes. Haynes working on Stolfi once again. That's been a good battle today. Now Rivera towards the goal and coming out to get that one was Sonia Moritz who has been busy here in this first half and has been up to the task for the most part other than the one goal by Haynes. As now the other way with speed. It's Marshall going towards the goal. Tries to get it across and a good defensive play there by Gavin. And that'll be another corner, but well worth it momentarily as it was a nice play there by Marshall trying to thread the needle across for Sanders. And Gavin doing a nice job disrupting the pass and able to get, out of, get it out of bounds. And once again, Skinner will take the corner for the Owls. Third one of the day. There it goes towards the box. Headed upfield by Rivera. Nice job there as Hallinan now with it. All by herself up towards midfield. Waits for reinforcements. Tries to thread it through to Eaton, but it goes to Golt. Now Golt springs Eaton with speed. Eaton taking it towards the box. Tries to find Haynes in the middle. Heads it towards goal. And she scores! Haynes with her second of the afternoon heads it home. And the Beacons go ahead 2-0 here in the first half. Defense to offense. It all started off the corner from the Owls back the other way. It was Andrea Rivera who headed it ahead. And then it was Eaton with speed who set up Haynes for her second. What a job by the Beacons on that one is. Haynes didn't get a lot on the header there, but enough to get it past Sonia Moritz. That one will go out as I believe half. they're going to call a goal kick. Time of the goal, 19 minutes, 13 seconds in the first half. And now in the match for the Beacons, number 24, Kaylee Sullivan. And it should be mentioned too that McKenna Hallinan did a good job too on that play. She was the one who sprung Eaton upfield and Eaton made a great pass across to Haynes. Just a lot of things to like about all around on that goal by the Beacons, which gives them a 2-0 lead. Now Velez battling with it at the midline here on the near side. Haynes gets it to Hallinan, who plays it back for Velez. Now Anderson with it. Anderson. To Kaylee Sullivan, who's in the game now for the Beacons. Collision there. Haynes tries to boot it through and Howland and able to find it off the ricochet. Now Rivera with it, plays it to the far side, but nobody there except for Marshall for the Owls. Baker with it, leaves it for Healy. Healy plays it ahead, but right there is Anderson and it actually be Spilios who comes out to collect it. Spilios boots that one high in the air. And that one will bounce out of bounds. And once again, quickly looking to move things ahead are the Owls. Skinner throws it in that time. Now it's booted ahead by Souza. McNeil, strong kick up the field. Nobody there though for the Beacons and that one will roll out of bounds. So throw in here once again for the Owls. That one booted ahead by Skinner. Stonewalled though by 
McNeil at just past the center line. Now it's played ahead. Sanders with it. Got it in the middle to Baker. Now back to Jansky. Tries to get it towards the box, but good positioning there by Velez, who plays it back ahead. And now Golt gets it to Rivera, who plays it up, looking for Eaton. Golt tried to step into it, but Mullen beat her to it. Nice play there by McNeil. As she had Baker on her, and McNeil able to maneuver around her and get the ball upfield. Skinner now with it, plays it ahead, and good read there by McNeil to step in front of that pass, but the Owls stay with it, and then another nice defensive play there on the pass. Read by Sullivan. That one's booted towards the box as Anderson able to get ahead on it, and Spilios will collect it, and she'll slow down play here as she looks for options and just decides to boot it high in the air. I'll tell you, she gets a lot of air on those boots coming out of the keeper position. Sullivan now gets it to Haynes. Haynes, once again, plenty of space, taking it towards the box, directing traffic, tried to thread the needle through to Hallinan, but a little too far ahead for her, but Haynes able to get it back. Now Velez plays it back for Sullivan. Now in the middle to Golt. Golt goes back to Anderson. Anderson now on the attack. Moves it up through the middle. Eaton with it. Couldn't get around the defender. That was Souza. Now back. Anderson has it. Goes back to Spilios. Spilios on the far side to McNeil. McNeil back to Spilios and not sure that's what she wanted to do as it looked like there was a lot of backspin on that one, but the Beacons are able to control it. Dave, what do you have for time? Okay. As we're past the midway point of this first half, Beacons with a 2-0 lead. Both goals coming from Kaylee Haynes, no surprise there. But a lot of credit to go around, especially on that second goal, which actually was generated off of a Keene State corner kick. It was all started by Andrea Rivera, who headed things upfield, as now Haynes tries to take it on the Owls' side of the pitch, but she gets stonewalled, and that one goes off the head of Rivera, but... She shakes it off, looks to be okay. Now Golt slips it through to Velez. Velez lost it momentarily, gets it back now, sends it for McNeil. Anderson to Sullivan, up for Haynes. Haynes to Hallinan. Hallinan, good footwork there. Gets it to Haynes as they try to work it towards the box. Haynes to Rivera. Hallinan with it. Now Velez, Beacons trying to set something up here. Golt to Rivera, Rivera tried to go to Velez and getting a foot on it there was Capico, but the Beacons stay with it. As McNeil got it through to Golt, she plays it ahead. That one's sent the other way, but Golt gets it right back. Kelly now back to McNeil. McNeil boots that one towards the box. Knocked down by Rivera and she boots it way too high over the net. But the Beacons with a nice press there. Good ball movement as they were trying to work something in, but it was Rivera that had the chance just too high over the net. And a goal kick here for the Owls taken by Moritz. Moritz boots it ahead. Now Healy with it as the Owls look to press the attack. 
And Keeley. Eliana Keeley in the game. The senior out of Bidford, Maine. As somebody's slow to get up there for the Owls. And we're going to call for the trainer, it looks like, again. And with that, we'll step aside here on the Beacons Broadcast Network, brought to you by LittleEast.TV. As we're back here, 18.06 left to go in the first half. The Beacons with a 2-0 lead. As an injured player is heading off, uh, Amanda Marshall, she walked off under her own power for the Owls. So, hope she's all right, and also a good sign, Kaylee Marshall, who left the game earlier with an injury, is back in there for the Owls. So that's a good to see as that one's booted ahead and some contact there, a foul called, and the Beacons will have the free kick. As that was Marissa McCarney getting the foul there for the Owls. Now McNeil. Goes back to Anderson, to Sullivan. Nice move by Sullivan, good patience. In the match now for Kansas now State, Haynes. number six, Kaylee Marshall. Number 14, Chips it to Sullivan Olivia Osama. D'Souza. Number 35. Sophomore now in the game out of South Plainfield, New Jersey. For the Beacons. That one's booted ahead on the near side by Stolfi, but a whistle. And in the match for the Beacons, number 27, Alina Keeley, and number 19, Olivia D'Souza. That's good right there. Thank you. So Haynes now will throw it in. On a good spot here. As Lindsey Buscarin also now in the game for the Beacons. Grad student out of St. Augustine, Florida. Now Golt to Keeley on the far side. Back to McNeil. She'll play it up. That one was gathered by Souza, sent back the other way, but right there is Anderson. Plays it for Sullivan. Sullivan goes back to the keeper, Spilios. Spilios to Anderson. Good read there by Marshall. And it'll go out of bounds. As another sub here. Golt will head off for the Beacons. And now Bella Luca. Freshman will enter the game out of Cumberland, Rhode Island, as that one played ahead. Sullivan bodies that one, avoids some contact there. Able to play it up. Now Buscarin plays it back for McNeil. McNeil taps it ahead for Keeley. Keeley trying to spring Luca, but a little bit too much mustard on that pass. And that'll go out of bounds. Another throw in here for the Owls. And they'll 
do it once more. Or, excuse me, no, this time they'll, they say it went off of the Owls, so the Beacons now with the throw in McNeil. Tried to get it to D'Souza, and once again, ball out of play. But the Beacons working the ball in closely, or closer to the Owls' net. McNeil throwing it towards the box. Knocked down. Buscarin with it, gets it back to McNeil, who tried to boot that one towards the box, but it was Bella Bausma, or excuse me, Balsama, who got in the way of that pass. Velez now back to McNeil, who chases it down, plays it towards the middle. Anderson gets it to Haynes. Now Sullivan in the middle to Velez. Velez, good footwork to McNeil. Velez, who's seen some solid ball movement today here from the Beacons. Has that one too far ahead of Keeley and out of bounds and quickly in play once again by Skinner. That one goes back to Spilios. Spilios plays to Anderson. Anderson, a bit dangerous there as they're going to call a foul. Spilios perhaps thought Anderson had a little bit more time as Kaylee Marshall was closing in on her and almost picked her pocket, but in the process knocked down Anderson which resulted in a foul being called, and now Anderson will have the free kick as she boots that one ahead. Headed back the other way by McCarney. Velez now with it. Nice move by Velez. She has put some really fancy footwork on display so far in this one. As Marshall battling with Sullivan. Sullivan plays it upfield, but that one goes right to Stolfi. Stolfi plays it towards the box. But McNeil right there to boot that one high in the air. And then Anderson booting that one even higher. As Hallinan battling there with Stolfi and some hard contact there by Stolfi. And another foul called against the Owls. So free kick again. That will be taken by Anderson. Danny Anderson, we mentioned that in the regular season matchup between these two teams earlier in October, Anderson had both goals for the Beacons in that 2-1 win. As somebody took a ball off the face and Trainer coming out, and we'll take a quick break here on the Beacons Broadcast Network, brought to you by LittleEast.tv. And we're back after that quick break. There's Kathleen Mullen who took one off the head and was escorted to the sideline by the trainer. Hope she's all right. I've seen a few injuries for the, the, the Owls, owls the to this afternoon the and Beacon, always Obama. hate to see that in any sport, anybody getting hurt. So we hope things uh, work out for the best uh, with that as now the Beacons send things the other way. D'Souza sends Keeley. Keeley with speed. 
has Buscarin and Haynes going towards a goal and Keeley not sure if she was trying to shoot that one that's what it looked like as it was a little bit too far to the outside and she had speed heading towards the goal and the goal kick taken by Moritz As we almost we approach the almost the 11 minute mark here in the first half, Beacons with the 2 0 lead. Kaylee Haynes both goals, who led the Beacons in goal scoring during the regular season. Now back the other way, but intercepted by Velez. Velez chips it past the center line, but doesn't get very far. Is back the other way come the Owls. That one's booted ahead by Capico. As now Marshall tries to throw that one towards the goal, but Spilios alert and ready as makes it look easy as she slows things down, now steps into one. And she can boot it, as now Haynes with it right in front of us. Tried to thread the needle to D'Souza, but good positioning, positioning defensively by Yansky. Now Sullivan on the attack tries to chip it through to Haynes and a smart play there from Stolfi who just sends it out of bounds as they were in a vulnerable position there where the Owls as Haynes was right in on the attack and had Buscarin going to the net as well. So Haynes will throw it in. He's getting a lot of space from that sideline looking to launch one towards the box and get some good air on it heading it towards the goal there was Keeley but didn't get a lot of heat on it as Moritz in good positioning smothers it and now boots it ahead Keeley to the far side As that one's played up ahead and too far, so it'll be a goal kick for Spilios. And she'll just play it to Anderson. Anderson to D'Souza. D'Souza gives it away. Jansky with it. Leaves it for Marshall. That one's played ahead by Luca, but right into the feet of Amanda Marshall. And now Velez tries to play it up. That was knocked down by Belasma. As Stolfi sends that one up, but right into Sullivan's body. And now D'Souza tries to spring Haynes, who had a lot of space, but once again, Stolfi in a good positioning there as D'Souza gets it to Haynes. Haynes working on Stolfi. Haynes cuts it to the middle. Haynes shoots it, looking for the hat trick as that one goes high in the air. And the Owls look to settle things down, play it up ahead as Marshall got a piece of it, but it goes right to McNeil. McNeil tried to thread the needle to Keeley, but in the right spot was Amanda Marshall. Spilios out to collect. She boots it high in the air. Pico got ahead on it. Now Sullivan heads it ahead. Keeley in a race there with Souza. And Souza's able to win it. And Keeley goes hard to the turf but gets right back up. That one's sent ahead, but nobody there for the Owls. And this will roll out of bounds. 
Torre Beacons throwing. And I believe that's Gina Albano, the senior from Haverhill, Massachusetts, in the game now for the Beacons. We'll have the throw in. As Keeley tried to head it, but whiffed and goes off an owl and out of bounds. So the Beacons, another throw in. And it'll be Albano again. Albano. Looking for Keeley again, and that one a little bit too high as that one will go out of bounds. As we approach five minutes remaining in this first half. Grace Abbott. As Grace Abbott now in the game for the Owls. Freshman. Out of Ashway, Rhode Island. Now Keeley with it. Going towards the net. Has Buscarin. Tries to get it to her. Haynes is there. Haynes tries to put it in. And it went off of a body in front and rolls out. And it'll be a corner kick for the Beacons. This will be their first of the afternoon. Leah Velez. Velez will take it. So the Owls have had three corners. Now the Beacons will take their first. Velez sends it away towards the box. Getting ahead on it. There was Luca, but it goes high over the net. And goal kick coming for Moritz. Moritz steps into it. Low kick, but good distance. Anderson gets ahead on it. Now comes right back to her and Sullivan to Albano. Now D'Souza. Now Buscarin. Plays it back. McNeil. Over to Albano. Albano. Being worked on there by Amanda Marshall. Now it's sent back upfield. Keeley battling there with Skinner. D'Souza heads it ahead. A race. Buscarin tries to be the first one there. And a nice play defensively by McCarney. And that one will go out. as Albano will throw it in. That was close to being a corner kick as it went out just before the end line. That one sent back out of bounds. So Albano to do it again. Looking for D'Souza. Marshall able to get in the way of that. Plays it up for Healy. Healy with speed, tries to thread the needle through to Abbott. Not far enough, and McNeil steps into it the other way. Marshall leaves it off for Stolfi, who sends it ahead. Now on the far side, Amanda Marshall working on Albano, gets it to Healy inside the box. Healy throwing it towards the goal, and a nice save there by Spilios. Maria Spilios has had a strong first half. And she boots it high in the air. Marshall being worked on there by Luca, who's able to get her foot in the way, goes out of bounds. Stolfi on the throw in. Cluster of bodies right in front of us here. Now being battled for. Anderson as Healy goes down and I believe they're gonna call a foul on her as we approach two minutes to go in this first half. Beacons leading still 2-0. Kaylee Haynes, the goal scorer times two. 
She had five during the regular season, so that's seven now total for the senior. Skinner boots that one towards the goal, and once again, Spilios alert and right there to smother it. <coughs> and she'll take her time looking for options upfield, as do the Beacons. Now she boots it ahead. Keeley looking to head it, goes too far. Marshall gives it away to D'Souza, who boots it ahead as nobody there, as now Keeley with speed trying to pursue the ball as it'll go out for a goal kick. So Moritz under two minutes in this first half. Boots it ahead. Healy able to get a piece of it, and it goes a little bit too far as McNeil plays it back to Spilios, who steps into it, looking ten, for Albano. Nine, Final eight, 10 seconds of the seven, first half. Six, five, Skinner four, quickly gets it in, three, as she's done all afternoon. Two, one, and that will do zero. it for so first team half team action. Boston, two, Keene State College, zero. As the Beacons will head into the break with a 2-0 lead. As we'll get you the first half statistics here. As we mentioned. Haynes with the both goals. Uh, assists coming from Eaton. And Hallinan, the first one, the first, that was the second goal. The first goal was assisted by Golt. As let's take a look at some of the first half statistics here. As you see the shots on goal dominated by the Beacons four to three, or excuse me, that is the total shots attempted, eight to three. And then shots on goal, Beacon still lead that department four to three as they get, well, it says uh, no saves on our stat sheet, but I do believe that is not correct as we, we had some chances, but uh, corners favored three to one as the Owls, but it was actually the Beacons who took advantage of an Owls corner kick. It was the defense offense, we talked about it. It was Rivera who got her head on it, who sent things back the other way for the Beacons, who set up that second goal. And then fouls, four to three. The Owls ahead in that category, not the category you want to be ahead in. And we have not had any yellow cards to speak of so far in this one. As we'll head to our halftime break. Andrew Bluestein here with you on this Tuesday afternoon, round one of Little East Conference action. It's the UMass Boston Beacons leading the Keene State Owls by a score of 2-0 as we head into our halftime break on the Beacons Broadcast Network brought to you by LittleEast.tv.
Soccer hosting Senior Day before their game against WestCon, honoring Kaylee Haynes, Maria Spilios, Danny Anderson, Kelly McNeil, Elena Keeley, Gina Albano, Sage Story, and Lindsay Buscarin before taking on WestCon, who is 5-0-1 in Little East Conference play this year, ranking second in the LEC. A tough task for the Beacons, who with wins their final two games in the LEC Conference play, can clinch a home playoff game right back here next week. And Sarah Kelly would look to get the scoring started early for the Beacons against Kristen Rossler, who was in net for the first half. That one was a nice save there. And then another shot on goal is ended up turning into a foul on the Beacons. And then Kaylee Haynes gets the scoring start in the 15 minute on senior day. Danny Anderson knocks this pass in front of the net. And Haynes somehow knocks it loose from Rossler, puts it in the back of the net. Beacons up one nothing on Haynes. Third goal of the year, the assist going to Anderson who knocked it into play. And then Sarah Kelly, yet again, with the scoring chance here in the first half. She was aggressive early on, down the right side of the pitch, and knocks it in front. Roster with a nice diving save there, jumps on it. But then after that, puts the ball back in play, and then Kalia Eaton, a smart play, gets in there. Cameras don't catch it because they didn't see it coming. And Eaton knocks this one into the back of the net, and the Beacons with Eaton's third goal of the year, in just the 16th minute, just a few seconds after the Haynes goal, unassisted, are up 2 nothing on WestCon. And Maria Spilio stayed strong in net, which was key for the Beacons to be in this position ahead by two. Another nice diving save by Spilio there keeps the Beacons in front 2 nothing. But then the Beacons would go right back to work on the offensive end, and it would be Kaylee Haynes yet again. How about that for her senior day? Out there on open ground, gets by Rossler for her fourth goal of the season, second of the game. And we're just going to let this one play out. Haynes celebrating with her teammates and then runs off the field and is going to go and high-five the entire line of teammates waiting there on the sidelines. Haynes fired up the Beacons with an offensive clinic in the first half, up 3 to nothing on WestCon. A complete stunner for the Wolves, who came into this game ranked second in the Little East Conference, trying to keep pace with Southern Maine, who was undefeated. But the WestCon offense wouldn't go quietly in the second half. But before that, you see Haynes here yet again, looking for the hat trick, nearly gets it home at the end of the first half. And then Maria Spilios, it would be all her in the second half, keeping this lead at three. Maya Crows here on the free kick, and Spilios with a nice save in front, keeps it a three-goal game. And then yet again, WestCon's going to have a scoring opportunity with Emma Sonsky. And Spilios there again, keeps it in play. And then again, from the right side of the pitch, Spilios, that header in front, redirected. She's there to make the stop. And then a nice dive right there to break up the play in the Beacons. Despite getting outshot 21 to 13, 10 shots apiece on goal for each team, they're bouncing in Beaconville as the Beacons pull off the upset and are now one win away from being able to host a home playoff game next week in the first round of the Little East Conference Tournament. And we're back here on the campus of UMass Boston. Round one of the Little East Conference Tournament Women's Soccer. It's the UMass Boston Beacons leading the Keene State Owls by a score of 2 nothing. Andrew Bluestein here with you on this Tuesday afternoon. We thank you for joining us on the Beacons Broadcast Network brought to you by LittleEast.tv as we're about to get set for second half action here as we saw a lot of the same from the Beacons as we have all season when they have the lead is a lot of taking their time turning that defense to offense they start from the back and work the ball up as saw a lot of that as well as Maria Spilios being sound as we've seen her throughout the season, making some big saves and also some good reads as well. And on the back end, on defense, you've had Danny Anderson and Kelly McNeil who have been sound all season once again today. Just a huge part of how the Beacons operate as a team. And then, of course, Kaylee Haynes getting both goals. And the second one 
was just a great team effort all around. It was actually generated off of a Keene State corner kick that started with Andrea Rivera heading it up to McKenna Hallinan, who was able to spring Kalia Eaton, who had speed going down that far side, and she was able to thread the needle through to Kaylee Haynes, who headed it home as we're underway for second half action. Beacons, this time going left to right across her screen, wearing the, the white as Howell's in the red. Healy gets it to Marshall, and that one goes out of bounds. Gavin to throw it in. Belez now, back to Gavin who boots it. Looking for Haynes, back the other way though as it was Stolfi who stepped in front of that. Now offense the other way for the Owls but once again disrupted, Golt this time. Now it's played up, Eaton with it. Trying to get around Souza, stays with it. Eaton, doing a good job possessing the ball, tries to center it, but it'll go out of bounds for a goal kick. So new Moritz will look to send things away. Kind of chips it to the near side. That one gets headed out of bounds by Marissa McCarney. So a throw in here for the Beacons. Sarah Kelly gets it in quickly to Eaton. Eaton tries to get it through, stays with it. Battling with Marshall. Now that one's played up by McCarney and it'll go out of bounds. So McNeil to throw it in. Was looking for Rivera, but it's headed back the other way by Marshall. And now it finds Anderson. Anderson opts to go back to the keeper, Spilios. Spilios sends it back to Anderson. As once again back to Spilios as they'll play catch. Now that one's booted ahead nicely by Stolfi, but it goes right to McNeil, 11 to 11. Kelly, nice move in the inside. Good cut there. Almost like a running back in football as now it's at the middle line, but Velez is able to step in front of it, takes it the other way, gets it to Eaton. Eaton stays with it, cuts to the inside. Eaton with space, heads towards the box, throws one towards the goal, and a nice save there by Moritz. But a good effort there from Kalia Eaton as taking advantage of the space in front of her. Beat her defender to the inside and was able to get a shot away. Now back the other way as Rivera got a piece of that and it goes right back to Moritz. And she'll yeah. boot it. As now Anderson back to get it. It's a foot race. Right. Anderson able to get it there, but it's pocket pick by Marshall. Marshall tried to play it through, but good layers defensively as Gavin was there and she'll boot it out of bounds for the Beacons. And I believe that was offside, reason for the stoppage. And a free kick for the Beacons, Anderson to take it. High in the air, that one's headed by Rivera. Now Haynes heads it ahead. Allenin, first to the ball, but a nice play by Mullen, who's back in the game after she took a ball to the face earlier. So good to see her back on the field. And Jocelyn Tyler back out there as well for the Owls. She went out earlier with an injury. Speed from Marshall as a collision there and perhaps some incidental contact 
as she went hard to the turf and gets up and appears to be okay. Spilios to McNeil. McNeil boots it past Marshall up for Kelly. Kelly gets closed in on there by McCarney, but Kelly does a good job staying with it and is able to get it ahead. Hallinan trying to catch up to it before it goes out of bounds, and she's able to, tries to center it for Haynes, and it goes in on Moritz. Good effort and hustle there by the Beacons from both Kelly and Hallinan as Haynes had another good scoring chance there, it looked like, as now Haynes with it on the far side. Maneuvers around the defender, but back the other way. Capigo intercepted by Anderson. Anderson now joining the rush, but Capigo Good job defensively there as Healy now the other way trying to spring Marshall. Marshall cuts it towards the net and it was behind Kaylee Marshall. As Spilios will now slow things down and boots it past the middle line, knocked down by Hallinan, now Rivera. Boots it out of bounds on the far side. Thrown in by Stolfi. Played ahead. And that will go in on Spilios and nonchalantly gets her body in front of it. And now we'll throw it ahead for Kelly. Kelly back to McNeil. McNeil with pressure. Tries to avoid Tyler. Now back the other way, Healy, but Velez gets back and cancels her out. And it'll go out of bounds. And I believe, I thought it may have been a corner. It looked like Velez may have touched it last, but nope, they're going to say goal kick. And Spilios plays it to Anderson, now on the far side. As it goes back to Spilios. Boots it ahead for Gavin. Gavin kicks it ahead, but goes right to Stolfi. Anderson now with it, working against Healy. Gives it away, Tyler. Plays it down low, but a nice job by Golt back defending. Now Eaton battling there with Skinner. Eaton able to get it, chips it ahead. Haynes on that far side. Working against Stolfi. That's been a matchup all day as that one's teed up on goal and a nice save by Moritz. Go ahead. As I was just mentioning, really solid matchup that we've seen today is Haynes and Stolfi is, those two have gone head to head when the Beacons have had the ball on numerous occasions here this afternoon as now Healy with it. Healy. Gets it through to Amanda Marshall. Now McNeil maneuvering through traffic, stays with it, takes it past the center line, gets it to Haynes on the far side. Haynes with speed, gets around the defender. Haynes towards the box, tries to center it. And she goes down hard and gets right back up. But a good job there by Mullen, who stepped in front of the centering pass, and it will be a corner kick. Corner kick by number 10, Aaliyah Velez. Velez attempting her second corner of the afternoon. As the Beacons get into position, Velez. Waiting for the official signal as it looks like the net wasn't lined up properly. Now it is. So Velez will 
Look to send things away here. Now gets the signal. There it is, towards the box. Hallinan able to get ahead on it, but it goes just wide on the left post. And it will be a goal kick. So Moritz taking her time. Now steps into it, line drive kick. Fancy play there by Kopiko, kind of got her back foot on it. And now going down to the turf is Rivera, but she appears to be okay as she gets some help from Caroline Golt as she's back to her feet now and gets back into position. So perhaps a good opportunity here for the Beacons as Danny Anderson will send it away on the free kick towards the box. And it's headed back towards the other way, but that one goes right to Gavin. And she put that one on goal with some heat behind it, but in good position there was Sonia Moritz to make the save and now she'll boot it ahead. Rivera heads it back the other way but then it's headed in reverse. That was Rachel Souza but now Velez sends it back as it's knocked down by Marshall. Golt opts to slow things down, goes back to her defender, McNeil, cross pass to Anderson, Anderson taking it through the middle, sends it in just over the head of Eaton and it'll go out of bounds. Quick up by Skinner, Kelly to collect it. Now McNeil boots it ahead, looking for Hallinan, high in the air, Eaton gets her body on it, Hallinan collects it, gets it to Haynes, Haynes, Gets around the defender, Haynes to the box, Haynes to the net, hits the post. Kaylee Haynes looking for the hat trick as she's had a couple of opportunities now since her second goal and that one was easily the best. Off the post, but the Beacon still pressing the attack in the second half. As that one back to midfield, Velez able to get it through to Haynes. Haynes to Hallinan, disrupted though by the Owls and sent back up to Healy. And McCarney steps into that one, but McNeil sends it right back the other way. Rivera now gets it to Eaton. Eaton with it, Beacons looking to press the attack here towards the box. Rivera now with it. Being double teamed as that forces her to go out of bounds. And so it'll be an Owls throwing. That one tossed in and thrown towards the goal by Golt. And Tyler has to get it. And she will throw it out of bounds. Kind of being trapped in that back right corner. Kelly throws it in bounds. Velez tries to dig it out. And once again, I thought it was going to go out of bounds. And Kelly able to jump on it, throws it towards the box. Hallinan with it. Good body position there, but gives it away as Marshall sends it up, but it goes right to Kelly. Kelly! Perhaps looking for Haynes on the net drive there, but good defensive positioning once again from Stolfi as back the other way. Now Gavin will use Spilio. Spilio steps into it on the one time pass. Haynes able to head it ahead, but it goes right to Tyler. 
or excuse me, that's Mullen who played it up. Gavin, high in the air towards midfield. Headed back the other way by McCarney. Now Velez in a battle with Capico. Capico wins it. McCarney throws that one in on Spilios and she'll knock it down with her left knee and slow things down. As now up for Anderson. Anderson to Haynes. Haynes ball kind of exploded on her a little bit, but Beacon's able to maintain possession as Velez gets knocked down hard to the turf, and that is going to be a foul. So a free kick for the Beacons. Anderson to take it, and once again, a good opportunity to generate another scoring chance perhaps for the Beacons. As Anderson will send away the free kick towards the box, high in the air. And I believe Howland got a head on it, but it went in the opposite direction. And that one sent up by Amanda Marshall and it'll go out of bounds. And now a substitution. So Hallinan will come off and Rivera will as well. So Buscarin back in the game as well. As Jess Carter, sophomore from Saugus, Massachusetts. That one goes out of bounds. Haynes will have the throw in. Haynes throws it right to Stolfi. And it's sent back up. Gavin plays it for Golt. Golt tried to get it to Kelly, but in the match, no, getting in the way of that was Kaylee Marshall. In the match with the Beacons. Now McNeil with it, Carter, McNeil, Lindsay, nice play by McNeil. She was challenged by Healy and was able to slip it back to Anderson as Buscarin's gonna get called for the foul there, a little bit too aggressive. And it'll be a free kick as Alexis Skinner looks to take it here. Skinner high in the air towards the box. Getting a head on it there was Capico, but that one sent <coughs> out of bounds. Marshall on the throw in. Gets it to McCarney. McCarney back to Marshall. As that one sent in on towards the back line and Spilios will collect it. Spilios with a big boot ahead to Haynes and kind of trampolines off of her legs and back to Gavin. McCarney. Back to Stolfi who plays it up but it goes out of bounds and the Beacons will have the throw in as another substitution here. So Caroline Golt will come out and Bella Luca, the freshman, will come back in. And for the Beacons, number 13, Bella Luca. That one's played up, Gavin. And they're going to say out of bounds, and Gavin will throw it in quickly to Velez. Velez back to Gavin. Able to get it up. To Buscarin. Buscarin waiting for Kelly. Chips it over to her. Kelly being double teamed. Gets it back for Luco. Plays it towards the box and it will roll in harmlessly on Moritz.
as Moritz will boot it ahead. Knocked down by Carter. Now back to Velez who uses McNeil. Luca had two players approaching in on hers. Now it comes to the near side and Kelly's right there and she'll dish it back to McNeil. McNeil chips it over to Luca. Now Eaton to Buscarin. Buscarin, nice move there, has Eaton going to the net and the ball kind of took a funky hop on her, but Luca stays with it. Goes it, gives it over to Haynes. Haynes inside the box. Haynes, nice move. Looking for the hat trick, just misses. Another great scoring opportunity for Kaylee Haynes who has been outstanding here this afternoon. Arguably the most noticeable player on both sides. Especially in terms of producing offense. I think she's had about five or six scoring opportunities just on her own today. As now Luca, nice move. Chips it over to Haynes and it's gonna be a bit too far ahead of her. But she's able to keep it in bounds for the moment and then kind of lost it as it'll go out the back for a goal kick. Moritz waiting once again. Line drive kick. Knocked down by Carter. But here come the Owls. Try to get through. There with the pass was Yansky. This time now it's McCarney who gets it through to Healy. Healy chips it ahead, but too far for Amanda Marshall as it goes out of bounds. Gavin. Gets it through to Haynes who lost it and then was able to beat two players to get the ball back. But now the Owls find it. Healy has Velez closing in, but Healy stays with it. Able to get it to Yansky. Now Yansky chips it over for Kaylee Marshall. Looking down low for Capico. And it goes out of bounds, rolling off her feet, and it'll be a goal kick. And another sub as Sarah Gavin, the junior, will take a rest. Kaylee Sullivan now back into the game for the Beacons. Anderson plays it up. Toluca to Buscarin. Now Velez. Velez, nice cross pass. Gets it to Eaton. Eaton has it. Tries to dribble through the middle. Able to get it to Carter. Eaton staying with it. Doing a nice job. Eaton, good effort and wins it. And then tried to move it ahead. But Stolfi was right there who played it up for the Owls. Now here comes Kaylee Marshall. Gets it through to Healy. Healy chips it ahead. And... Nice job there by Sullivan who plays it back the other way. And they're gonna say it went out of bounds so the Beacons will have a throw in. Sullivan gets it into Haynes, goes off her body. She's able to collect it and play it up but it goes right to Skinner the Owls now is a whistle and a foul called against Sullivan I believe is free kick coming for the Owls here so good opportunity the Owls trying to cut this lead in half it's 2-0 Beacons
Alexa Skinner on the free kick. Good opportunity for the Owls. That one line towards the goal, but Spilios right there to smother it. And she'll throw it up quickly for Kelly, who has speed. Kelly to Buscarin. Chips it over to Eaton. Back to Buscarin. Buscarin down the near side, working against Skinner. Cuts towards the middle. Nice move there. Buscarin to Eaton. Eaton with it. Chips it over to Haynes, and it was a little bit too hot for her to handle as it'll go out of bounds and a goal kick. And some more subs as Hallinan and D'Souza will check back into the game as Carter and Eaton will take a rest. That one's booted ahead. In the match now for the Beacons, number four, McKenna Hallinan, and number 19, Olivia D'Souza. Stolfi on the throw in. Get some good torque on that. Now Healy comes out with it on the loose scramble. Nice move by Healy, cuts to the middle. Amanda Marshall, the Kaylee Marshall, plays it towards the goal, but a nice job again. Positionally by McNeil, who plays it up. Now D'Souza plays it for Haynes. Haynes has a step on Stolfi. Haynes, oh, they're going to say offside. Offsides in UMass Boston. I believe they caught Buscarin, who was a bit ahead of the play, but almost another golden opportunity for Kaylee Haynes. As we're now under 20 minutes left in this second half, Beacons still have the 2-0 lead on both goals coming from Kaylee Haynes in the first half. D'Souza plays it back for Anderson. Through to Sullivan, Sullivan had some trouble, and now Velez chips it through, and it goes to the near side for Kelly. Kelly. Hops to go back for McNeil. McNeil will use her keeper, Spilios. Spilios, with a little bit of a fake there, gets it up to Sullivan. Sullivan leaves it for McNeil. McNeil being bothered there by Marshall. And now Kelly steps into one, looking to spring Hallinan, going towards the goal. Hallinan couldn't quite catch up to it, but tries to stay with it, and she gets it back. Now plays it towards the goal as a collision there going out of bounds as Moritz made the save. And a good one-on-one -on -one battle there between McKenna Hallen and, and Kathleen Mullen. Good effort by both players. That one's played ahead by Stolfi and that'll go out of bounds. So another throw in here for the Beacons. Luca will do the honors. That one high in the air. Velez comes out with it. Chips it ahead for Haynes. Haynes with a burst of speed. Stops. Tries to cut towards the middle. Now plays it as Stolfi able to get a foot on it. D'Souza as Marshall able to get it ahead. But McNeil right there. Tries to play it through the middle. Good positioning there by Capico. But Luca able to get it right back for the Beacons. Plays it for Haynes. Haynes, good exchange there. Leaves it for Luca. Luca plays it towards the middle to Hallinan. Hallinan stays with it. Tried to get it back to Luca, and it was canceled out by Mullen. Beacons trying to stay with it as it's sent back the other way. Capico leaving it off. For Souza, who plays it up, but it goes right to Sullivan, who plays it towards the goal. Buscarin puts it on goal, and she scores! Set up on the pass by Sullivan, and the Beacons now lead it 3-0. And... The attack paying off again. They've been pressing... 
all afternoon. And that time, it's Lindsay Buscarin who finishes it off, the grad student out of Cambridge, Mass. Extends the lead as the Beacons ahead by three now. UMass Boston Bulldogs score by number 36, Lindsey Buscarin, assisted by number 24, Kaylee Sullivan. Time of the goal, 73 And it was a great pass by Kaylee Sullivan, who from Sullivan. chipped it perfectly goal, ahead. Minutes, 48 seconds. And Buscarin finishing it off. Now in the match with the Owls, number 26, Christina Sanders. Beating Moritz. And the Beacons look to press it once again. Cowie gets it to Buscarin. And Buscarin looking to center it for Hallinan. But once again, it's Kathleen Moen who's sound positionally and able to knock it out of bounds. And we'll have a corner here. Beacons corner kick being taken by number 24, Kaylee Sullivan. So Kaylee Sullivan who just had an assist on the Beacon's third goal, looking for another one here on the corner. As the Beacons look to extend their lead again. And that one goes towards the middle and somehow doesn't go in, still loose. And now a whistle. And they're gonna say it did go in, I think. Some confusion here on the field, but as for the moment, it looks like it's another goal for the Beacons. And it'll be 4 nil. And it was hard to tell who was able to put that one home. It was hard to tell if it even went in or not, and the Owls pleading their case, they didn't think it did. But the officials disagree, and it looks like it'll stand. So we'll try to figure out who put that one home for the Beacons. It was very difficult to tell. There's a lot of bodies in front. It was a very uh, awkward sequence. As the initial opportunity, I was, I'm not sure if it was the first or the second one that went in, but it was a great effort by Sonia Moritz, the keeper who made a great save. It looked like initially. And Beacons look to stay in control here now with a four goal lead as they're looking to advance in the Little East Conference Tournament. As we mentioned, Western Connecticut is waiting as the second seed, they have a bye. They're Going to play the winner of this game as the host. And a nice move there by Gian Albano, who's back in the game for the Beacons. Now play to the far side. Luca knocks it down. Plays it back for Anderson. Anderson plays it ahead. Velez back to Spilios. Spilios way out of her goal. Plays it to Anderson. Albano goes back to McNeil. Spilios to McNeil. Had Marshall closing in on her, but she's able to elude her. Now Velez with it. Kelly to Velez. Velez back to Anderson. Wait, 
Albano to McNeil. And so it seems as if that fourth goal was an own goal by the Owls. And that means it must have been Kaylee Sullivan who was the last to touch it because she took the corner kick for the Beacon. So and we'll try to figure that out. As that one centered, looking for Haynes was Keeley on the centering pass. And now Buscarin tried to play it towards the goal as Moritz will collect it. As we're now under 10 minutes left in this second half. McNeil. Spilios to Albano. Albano being worked on by Marshall. Nice play by Kaylee Marshall who picks her pocket. Marshall tries to work it towards the goal, but it rolls slowly in on Spilios and she'll scoop it up. Spilios. Boots it high in the air. As that one out of bounds. So some subs here as Velez will take a rest for the first time today. As Jess Carter will come back into the game. Also some subs on the Owl side of things. As Kaylee Marshall will step off, it looks like. As Bella Balsama back into the game. Now in the match for the Owls, number four, Charlotte Drake. Number seven, Charlotte Maya Drake. Baker. And number 14, Bella Balsama. Back in there as and well, and Maya Baker. Baker. 28, Jess Carter. Now in Buddha towards the goal, almost a hop that went over. Moritz, the keeper, but she timed her jump well reading that ball and able to collect it. That goes high in the air. Keeley calling for a fair catch there, it looks like, as it rolls back the other way as we have an injured player here. As Allison Yansky looked like she kind of bumped into Keeley. as she gives a thumbs up and appears to be good. One of those stingers, she was holding her hand, but she'll stay in the game. Hey, come on, McNeil goes back to Spilios. Spilios over to Anderson. Anderson boots it ahead, past Haynes, and it'll go out of bounds for a Owls throw-in. Out of bounds again, and another sub here as Luca will check out And Stella Pampucha will check into the game. And the match now for the Beacons, number three, Stella Pampucha. The freshman out of Hilton Head, South Carolina. And Heritage Academy. And another whistle here is foul going against Keene State. So Anderson will take the free kick. Again, the Beacons with a four goal lead. 
Two from Haynes, one from Buscarin, and the fourth came off of a weird sequence on a corner kick that was taken by Kaylee Sullivan, and it looked like it may have been an own goal by the Owls, and that's where we stand now. That one a little bit too far for Albano to get there for, so it goes out of bounds. And a sub for the Owls as checking out is Copico. And coming back in is Jocelyn Tyler. Back in the match for the Owls, number three, Jocelyn Tyler. And another whistle. And this time the foul going against the Beacon, so a free kick. That one played up nicely by Rachel Souza. Booted ahead by Albano, but goes right back to Souza as D Souza will get the foul call there against the Beacons as now Stolfi with the free kick. Line drive towards the box. Jocelyn knocks it down and a chance by Yansky who Tried to put it towards the goal, but it hits a body, goes out of bounds, and it's going to be a corner. King State corner kick being taken by number nine, Alexa Skinner. So Alexa Skinner attempting the corner, and I believe she's taken all of the corners today for the Owls. She boots it. High in the air towards the goal, and once again, Maria Spilios in great position. As like a vacuum sucks it in and will play it up. Howell's trying to work it back the other way, but been tough having to deal with Danny Anderson back there today who's been very solid defensively along with Kelly McNeil as they've been spectacular all season for the Beacons. D'Souza battling on the far side. As that was with McCarney. Now Albano with it. Cross pass to Sullivan. Sullivan looking for Haynes. Nice pass by Sullivan. And Sullivan was the one who had the nice pass on the Beacon's third goal, setting up Buscarin. As we're now under five minutes to play in this conference tournament matchup, round one. Beacons leading it 4-0 as they look to move on and play Western Connecticut on the road. Nice throw in there by Haynes. That one gets headed by Keeley in front. Haynes got some real solid distance on that throw in. That was like a 25 yard pass. Moritz. With a line drive kick. And that deflects high in here. And once again goes out of bounds. And 
Looks like a free kick awarded here to the Owls, booted ahead by Stolfi. And goes out of bounds off of, looks like Pamputra was. And now played towards the back line and Spilios there to collect it. Spilios looking upfield and then will just decide to punt it ahead. Stolfi heads it back the other way. To Christina Sanders. And goes out of bounds, another throw in. Pamputra playing it in for D'Souza. As Stolfi steps into that one. And it bounces past Charlotte Drake. But Tyler now with it. Working against Albano, leaves it back for Drake. Sullivan draped all over her as Skinner plays it towards the goal, but Spilios once again there to pick it up. And Spilios boots it ahead. That one headed down by Souza. Looked like it might have hit her in the face, but no reaction as Haynes now with it on the far side, but it's sent back the other way. Perhaps a chance for the Owls here, but nice job by Danny Anderson, who cancels out Sanders as we enter the final minute of this first round conference tournament matchup. Pampucha to throw it in. Buscarin with it. As the Beacons just look to try to dribble out the clock here with the four goal lead. Buscarin stays with it. Gets it to Keeley. Ten. Final Nine, 10 seconds. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and that zero. will do it. So the UMass Boston Beacons are moving on in the Little East Conference Tournament as they'll head to Western Connecticut for round two. As we'll figure out in the coming days when that game will be. But a great effort all around today by the Beacons. Very sound defensively. Getting great goaltending from Spilios as usual. And 4 nothing will be the final as we'll look at our final team stats of this one. As you see, shots attempted 16 to three. The Beacons just ran away with it in terms of offensive play in the second half. Shots on goal, eight to three. Saves tied at three apiece, or excuse me, five, three for the Beacons, five for the Owls as Moritz was busy today and she made some really solid saves for the Owls. Nothing to really fault her on. Corners four to the Beacons three. The Owls favored that one. Fa Owls with eight fouls as well as the Beacons. And once again, we did not have any yellow cards here today. But once again, the Beacons are moving on in the Little East Conference Tournament. They'll play Western Connecticut in the second round. Time of the game to be determined. So follow along on social media for the Beacons to figure out or to find out when that game will be. But that will wrap things up here from UMass Boston. And this one as let me just uh, give you a final scoring summary. Forgot to do that. 
But it was Haynes getting the first two goals. The first one assisted by Caroline Golt. The second goal coming from Haynes as well. Assisted by Hallinan and Eaton. The third goal by Lindsay Buscarin, assisted by Kaylee Sullivan. And the fourth goal, I'm assuming, will be credited to Kaylee Sullivan. We still don't have it listed. It was off of a corner kick, and we think it was an own goal by the Owls. But once again, that's your scoring recap. Final score, 4 nothing in favor of the Beacons. They're moving on to round two, and that will wrap up our coverage here on the Beacons Broadcast Network, brought to you by LittleEast.TV. I'm Andrew Bluestein. We thank you for joining us, and enjoy the rest of your day.